Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Twin Motion video, and today we're going to be looking at the new release of Twin Motion 2022.2.2, the preview 2. Now, it's a bit of a mouthful, but there's some really nice new features they're introducing in these preview versions before the final release that comes later in the year. And we're going to be looking at one particular big function, the new Sketchfab library integration. So do enjoy the video, and thanks for watching. Hi everybody, uh, Jonathan Reeves here with another Twin Motion video, and today we're going to be looking at the new Twin Motion 2020.2 Preview 2. Now, there's some really exciting new features that have been released in this preview version, and we're going to focus on one of the bigger ones, which is the new Sketchfab library integration. Now, if you're not sure what Sketchfab is, uh, please hang around for the video. You're going to find out all about this amazing resource that's now fully integrated into the new Twin Motion. So you can see we've launched the Twin Motion, and here in the libraries we've got the Quixel Mega Scans, but now we've got a new section called Sketchfab. And within that Sketchfab section, you can see there's a number of different categories that we can kind of look into. Now the really cool thing about Sketchfab, if you know about it, it's been going for quite a while and there's a really good range of assets that you can basically use in your projects. So we're just going to kind of look into a few of the folders here. Um, you can see just looking at the animals and pets and um, things like a blue whale, if you need one of these for your projects, you never know. Um, you can basically just have a quick look at these in Sketchfab and you can favourite them and download them. What we'll do, let's take a look at something a bit more architectural for this particular section. I'm literally amazed by the amount of content that's available for free. Um, you know, world resources uh, like this are just invaluable for creators and sort of content creators as they create their amazing scenes using things like Twin Motion. There's such a variety of, of stuff as well. And one of the things I really love is the easy access to click open in Sketchfab. And here you, look, you can get a really, really great preview of the object and the asset before you actually go and download it into Twinmotion itself. So it does save a lot of time. You don't have to kind of download it, then try it. You can have a look at it first, uh, make sure it's good and, you know, what you're looking for. The other really good thing is you'll notice that the file size is also listed and displayed in the preview. That's actually really handy. Um, do note there's some conditions attached to the licensing um, and some of the authors need to be credited when you use their models. So that's something that's important to remember if you're going to be borrowing content. We can see we've got this uh, post-apocalyptic house downloading and in a second we'll come back and look at it. I would recommend when you're actually uh, downloading these items, because there's so many of them, you're never going to find them again unless you actually make them into favourites. Um, so if it is something you like the look of, not only do you click the favourite button, the heart there, you should actually download it and favourite them. That'll make them really nice and easy to find in the future in this amazing, bewildering mass of thousands of objects. Now, according to the Twinmotion website, there's actually 70,000 assets and objects here. That's just literally a staggering amount. And you imagine how long it would take you to search through those. So you will notice at the top there is a uh, search bar, so you can actually use that to filter the searches as well, which is really cool. But yeah, just for now, I'm just enjoying having a good look through. Let's use the search. Search for Golf GTI, my first ever uh, nice sort of fast car. Let's go for one of those. And you can see there's a few different varieties of Golf. I like the look of this one. Let's favorite it and download it. Some of them download actually really, really quickly. Um, and we can simply, when we're ready, Let's see if there's anything else we want to grab before we download and drag them into the file. Yeah, they look cool. There's some thin barrels there. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to go to my favourites. I've got four cars. Drag and drop those in. You can kind of get a bit of an impression about the file size by how long they take to load. Um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Do note as well, um, one of the other new features that's quite nice is the new widget. Um, so you've now got these sort of coloured axes. Um, green, red and blue. So that just sort of chimes in with many other sort of 3D softwares. Now you can see that once the asset comes in, um, you can actually modify things like reflectivity and the sort of lightness and darkness of the texture. But you can't actually change the individual um, textures necessarily. 
And that's because uh, the entire object just comes through as one piece of geometry with the UV maps of the texture applied. So that's one limitation, but in some ways that's a good thing because it makes it nice and simple uh, to play around with the asset itself. So you can see the assets look really nice. Um, obviously they work uh, really, really well with the path tracing function as well. And you, here you can see I'm just working with path tracing enabled just on low settings. Um, you can see that we're getting sort of better reflections and things like that as well. Now do bear in mind that because the assets are one uh, lump, if you like, you are not gonna be able to edit them uh, individually when they come in. So they are what they are in some ways. Um, but, you know, you can certainly modify the uh, materials a little bit and things like the UV maps could be changed if you needed to. So I really, really think this is a great addition to uh, Twinmotion. It's a fantastic resource to have these new assets available. So you can see how quickly uh, we can kind of create a little scene, just introducing a bit of tarmac with uh, the grunge slider there just to get a bit more kind of weathered look. And again, we can sort of make that a yellow a bit more sort of shiny and available if we like as i say the one thing that you can't do is then the individual materials that are applied because all of it is one big uv map but again that's what helps to keep the model sort of quite low polygon uh, in the scheme of things for the detail level that you're getting but here we are with the path tracing uh it looks absolutely awesome i think it looks really really great so another little test i just wanted to try was uh what happens when we sort of change the weather see how that responds that all seems working well and fine as well excellent so what do you guys think about these new um, sketchfab assets i think the integration into twinmotion is going to be a really really nice bonus now one thing i would recommend though just because they are there just still make sure that you kind of select the appropriate things um, I've done, you know, I've noticed that it's very easy to get carried away. We've all done it, where you just get carried away with sort of loading up your project with models that are just available, uh, not necessarily that they might enhance the project and the scene. So that's a more sort of word of warning, really. With all these easily available assets, just make sure that you choose the appropriate ones. Now, I just wanted to take this opportunity to highlight my book, Revolutionize Your Rendering with Twinmotion. This is a beautiful 320 page fully illustrated PDF and ebook that's available for you to buy in uh, on the store. And it features some of the best featured artists from all over the world. So if you want to learn more about Twinmotion, take a look at the book and I really hope you enjoy reading it. And thanks for watching. Okay, so let's create a new scene and looking at something a little bit more architectural this side. Um, so here we are in the architecture section of the Sketchpad library. As you can see, it's amazingly huge. Now I've already downloaded a couple of assets here that I like the look of. Um, this was a low polygon apocalyptic house. I just wanna have a good look at this. So I'm gonna click onto the model in the browser and click F to fit. Let's just kind of navigate in a bit more closely. Now look at that. I mean, it looks absolutely superb. The model itself is really nicely textured and we can kind of move around and just have a really good look at that asset. So, you know, if you're a kind of games designer or just kind of trying to put something into the background of your scene with Twinmotion, I think these new Sketchfab assets are going to be a real time saver. In that, you know, you can basically just sort of drag and drop them in. Um, do bear in mind that some of them definitely come in a bit large. Okay, so this thing that I brought in here is a bit large. So just pop down to the scale and type in um, whatever you think it is. It's normally a factor of 10 or 1. Let's just see what happens when we do that. That sofa, yeah, looks about right now. It looked like it came in 100 times too big for some reason. So that's something I've noticed with the Sketchfab assets. I guess it's to do with the units they were created in uh, in the first place. But it's not really a big deal. You can just bring them in and scale them up or down in size. So as I say, we can modify the materials to some extent just by clicking on them with the uh, texture tool. But you will notice that basically the entire sort of texture is one big UV map, can you see? So all of those textures are applied to a fairly low polygon model. So that's just something to bear in mind, um, but as I say, we can still simply sort of modify the darkness and the lightness and things like reflectivity as well. But I think that looks really, really cool. You know, very, very rapidly, we could start to put together a scene uh, by choosing various assets. There's a really nice sort of uh, container, can you see? And what's good about these things, if you just hold shift down, you can obviously copy them 
and duplicate them as instances or copies. Let's just instant no, instance those. And then of course, I could select them all in the uh, scene graph, hold shift down, drag off another set of copies. Let's just grab that axis there. I do like the new colored access. I've got used to it now. Took a while to get used to it, but uh, I think that really helps in terms of navigation. There we go, we've got loads of containers already come in. But the good thing is, because they're all instances, it will keep the file size pretty low in twin motion as well. So the Sketchfab library is definitely a huge uh, bonus. This, on top of the Quixel library, gives you access to probably the world's biggest library of 3D items within a piece of software. And obviously this is a kind of direction of travel that Epic are moving in with this integration of web assets that are available directly. So here's a really nice sort of collection of uh, other buildings there, sort of industrial bits of kit that I can bring in. But again, I guess these are really kind of for you to prop out and make into things like backgrounds for your models, just so you can kind of build those scenes really rapidly. So I'm really looking forward to just seeing what I can do with the new Sketchfab assets. Um, some of them are not gonna be ones that I'll be using personally, things like these low poly people, you can see, A, they've come in too big, let's scale them down, but really they're not going to compete with the twin motion people I would recommend. Worth having a quick look, but you know, you never mind, you might find something particularly required in there, but that's not really going to compete with the twin motion people. So, uh, we're just having a quick look at another scene. Um, here we're looking into nature and plants. Now, I just wanted to show you, if you open up the model in Sketchfab itself, um, what you do is you get a very nice preview that you can kind of scroll around. If you click into the bottom corner, you can maximize and go full screen. And, you know, it looks really amazing, actually. The preview, uh, they've done a very good job in Sketchfab. So do make sure that you do this before you actually bring your assets in. Have a little look at them. You'll notice you can also uh, turn off things like post-processing. You can also look at things like the normal maps and the ambient occlusion maps and so on as well. It's actually really handy. Um, and then we can just go back and look at the, uh, the final rendering of the asset. Now you'll notice also it does have a UV button so you can actually check all the UV maps that are coming in. But the quality of these assets is fantastic. Let's just drag one of these items in. So we'll favorite it just so we can find it easily. Uh, let's drag it into our strange scene that we're creating here. Um, it's definitely something that you need to have a little play around with um, in order that you can come and experiment with the different assets that you see. So what do you think of that? It looks absolutely fantastic, really nice quality. And if we hold shift down, we can kind of duplicate and rotate a few of these rocks, for example. And then we could always scale them quite easily just by getting onto the scale widget. Scaling it down a little bit, let's get the move widget again. Let's move that back out a little bit more. So if you combine uh, groups of these rocks, then you can do, you know, really spectacular things very rapidly. Um, just kind of click to fit to them. You'll notice you can also select the group as well and basically manipulate that group. So let's just click onto the widget here. What I've noticed is if you click onto uh, the widget itself, they all move in different directions. But if you actually click onto the yellow part of the widget, um, basically they will move as a group. If you want to move them as an individual group, then just grab the yellow bit of the widget and you'll notice that that means that they can actually be moved um, without sort of moving individually, if you like. And just once again, remember that you can kind of brighten or darken those textures just to suit the uh, mood and atmosphere of the visual you're trying to create. But overall, these are really, really wonderful quality and another big, big benefit for Twin Motion, I think. I really like the way that Epic have kind of reached out to the community um, and kind of empowered them in a way to democratize the world of 3D. Because the thing about Sketchfab is anybody can contribute their really high quality assets for free. Um, and you can see this building community, it's sort of a really amazing place for 3D artists to contribute and add some context in. Now I'm just looking here at the snowy mountain terrain and I really want to download that and see how that works in Twin Motion because that means that we can literally bring in entire terrain assets into Twin Motion and play with those. 
So you can see we've now downloaded our snowy mountain terrain. It's come into Twin Motion. Um, again, the scale is a bit messed up, so don't worry too much. As long as you know that it's like a thousand or a hundred times too small or too big, it's quite easy to cope with that. So that was scaling it up by a thousand. It looks to me a lot larger than that. So let's add another zero to all of these. So just tab through. Let's type 10,000. And yeah, that looks a lot better, I'd say. Okay, so let's zoom our camera in, kind of get into the uh, terrain itself. And you can see, even though it looks absolutely fantastic, it's just a very simple mesh with a really nice textured UV map applied to it. So in terms of file size, this is gonna be pretty, pretty small. Um, but this would actually be really quite tricky to create into in motion. It would take some time. So I'm interested to, let's just change the background, something a bit more mountainous and appropriate. And also, <clears throat> it would be nice to see how it responds to the weather. So let's go on to our weather tab and basically change that to slightly more wintry conditions. And remember that if you go to the winter section and you go down a bit closer to the rain, let's slide that slider down a little bit, then it will start to snow, of course. So perfect kind of setting for our mountainous snowy background. Um, let's just track in a couple more assets. You can see that these snap to the different surfaces of the terrain, um, and then we can basically drag those in. And you'll notice that, you know, this tree, even though it's a sketch fab asset, actually does reflect the fact that it's snowing. So when the snow's turned on, you'll notice that the asset actually has snow on the top of it, which is pretty amazing. Um, you know, this sort of saves a lot of kind of creativity in that you can just drag your assets in, and if the weather is doing its thing, they will respond. Again, this rock has snow on top. So it's absolutely amazing how they've done that. Um, I can't imagine the programming required to kind of, you know, create that intelligence for weather. But there we go. Um, so I've just created a very, very simple little scene using that terrain and a couple of props and bro assets brought in and the weather effect there that we can turn on and off as well. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this uh, introduction to Twinmotion 2020.2. Uh, the new preview too it's definitely something you should download and have a play with it's obviously free for you for now there are a few other new features i'll be talking about in later videos but the main one we've covered today is the new sketchfab library integration and i'm looking forward to playing with this in the next few weeks i hope you are too thanks for watching everybody bye bye